it's a pleasure to be here today in Warsaw uh, representing the work that we're doing in Philip Morris International on uh, reduced risk product development and assessment. I'm going to talk today about one of our products that's part of a portfolio that we have in development uh, and assessment and some of which are commercialised already um, in a number of different countries uh, across the globe. First important point to note, don't worry, you don't need to read all that text, um, I'm going to explain gently what this means. Um, we call these products reduced risk products and what we mean by that is these are products that we believe have the potential to reduce the health risks associated with smoking. We're working extremely hard on developing the evidence for each and every one of those products. We haven't quite completed all of the studies that we think are important to demonstrate risk reduction. All of the results we have so far are very, very encouraging and ultimately we will be submitting, particularly for our product that I will talk about today, the tobacco heating system, we'll be submitting that evidence to regulators, uh, including the US FDA, later on this year. So um, that's the uh, cautionary statement. Um, so first of all, why are we doing this? Well, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, cardiovascular disease risk reduction. Now, I chose to use this as a theme for this talk, although we are looking at evidence that goes across all of the smoking-related diseases. But cardiovascular disease is obviously, in smokers, the highest cause of morbidity and mortality among smokers. So I wanted just to give you a snapshot of the evidence we have um, related to that disease. Now, obviously we heard, those of you who were in the Billion Lives premiere last night um, would have heard a lot of the, the people speaking about the cause of the issue, the issue of smoking is really combustion. It's about the burning of tobacco that causes the production of all those harmful or potentially harmful compounds that smokers are inhaling on a daily basis. It's not nicotine. And that's the premise that we work on for all of our products. All of them will deliver nicotine to smokers, but will offer a variety of different, if you like, smoking experiences so that smokers can find something that they can switch to that suits their needs um, and, and preferences. And we're doing this because there are more than a billion smokers worldwide, and we believe that there won't be just one single product or one single type of product that's going to suit the needs of every single smoker. So we're working on, as I mentioned, a portfolio approach. Um, and I will take you through our product and the tobacco heating system. So the product works by heating tobacco rather than burning it. So burning happens between six and 900 degrees centigrade in a conventional cigarette. If you look at the picture, um, the red uh, diagram here, that's a diagrammatic representation of the temperatures that you find in a burning cigarette cone. And you can see they're very, very high. The figures there are, are definitely between six and 900 degrees centigrade. What that causes is um, a huge amount of energy that's available to break down that tobacco into all sorts of different chemical compounds, many of which are thought to be harmful or potentially harmful. And it's those that smokers are taking in in the smoke um, on a, on a re very regular basis. Our product, Tobacco Heating System, works at much, much lower temperature. In fact, there is no combustion happening in the product at all. The average temperature that the tobacco gets to is around about 250 degrees centigrade, which is well below the temperature where combustion would happen. So the design of the product was really to eliminate combustion and therefore eliminate or minimize the production of all those harmful or potentially harmful compounds. Now the product works, you see a diagrammatic representation on the left hand side, by using a, a tobacco stick with specially processed tobacco, it, um, it's very different to a conventional cigarette, that you insert into a holder where there's a heater that continuously heats the tobacco to the right temperature. And the beauty of the invention is the heater within the um, product is actually also a temperature sensor. So it's continually checking and monitoring to make sure that the tobacco is always at the correct temperature. Always warm enough that it can produce um, a vapor or aerosol that the user can inhale, but never too warm that you have the risk that combustion would happen. 
uh, we have a few posters around if anyone's interested in understanding a little bit more and seeing the product we'd be very very delighted to to show you how it works so that's the product now if we think about the the tools that we have at our disposal to assess whether this product um, has the potential to reduce the health risks um, associated with smoking and particularly for cardiovascular disease we need to step back first and say, okay, how are things like cardiovascular disease developing when somebody is using a combustible cigarette? So across the top, you can see the sort of logical process that happens within um, a smoker. So first of all, you light a cigarette, you have those high temperatures, and you have the formation of all those harmful and potentially harmful chemicals. The smoker breathes those into the lung, they go down into the alveoli, where they're then absorbed into the blood circulation and cause exposure of the, um, of the smoker's um, internal um, blood circulation to those harmful chemicals. The harmful chemicals then cause um, what we would call molecular and cellular <coughs> changes within the smoker's body that ultimately lead to changes in the tissues and organs that result in disease, whether it be cardiovascular disease, lung cancer, or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So when we looked at all the tools and techniques that we um, thought could be available to help us assess against each of these steps, you can see the questions that we, um, that we answered towards, the, uh, that we asked towards the bottom. The first question is, does this product indeed produce lower levels of those harmful chemicals? That's really, really important. Without that, we can't imagine that the product ultimately will have any impact on disease risk reduction. So tools we can use to do that are obviously analytical chemistry. So a very, very useful tool to help us understand, compared to the levels produced by a regular cigarette, how far reduced are we when we heat the tobacco rather than burning it? Second step is, do we reduce the exposure of smokers to those harmful chemicals? Because the first step is machine smoking. It's analysis in the laboratory. So it's really important that we do analysis in adult smokers to check whether they do indeed reduce their exposure to those harmful chemicals. And that's obviously done through clinical studies. And we have a program of eight clinical studies that we've completed on this product, including some that were conducted by a clinical research organization here in Poland and a few other countries. And I'll show you the results from, from um, a couple of studies later on. The next thing that we can look at, um, again, is, is looking at what is the impact on disease mechanisms. So those molecular and cellular changes that happen in a smoker when um, they're exposed to those harmful chemicals. Now we can use laboratory models of disease and in vitro tests that help us to understand what the impact is on those molecular and cellular changes. And we have a large program in place that's been going on for many, many years to understand those disease mechanisms and then to understand the impact of switching from combustible cigarettes to the vapor or aerosol from our tobacco heating system. What's the impact on those disease mechanisms? And then finally, if we have a favorable impact on the, those disease mechanisms, does that lead to favorable changes in disease risk? And there are two main uh, methods that we can use to assess that. One, again, is laboratory models using, for example, animal models of disease to understand whether we see favorable changes in disease risk endpoints in those animals. But then also we can go back to our clinical studies and have a look to see whether smokers who switch to this product actually have favorable changes in their health indicators that could indicate that they will um, have reduced risk of, for example, cardiovascular disease. So I'm going to take you through a whistle-stop tour of some of the elements that um, we have been developing answering each of these questions in our laboratories in Neuchâtel and with clinical research organizations um, across the world. So the first question is, do we reduce the production, the formation of those harmful or potentially harmful chemicals? Well, this is laboratory test, and I'm, I'm representing um, years and years of laboratory test, tests in one very, very simple graph. The way to read the graph is, um, along the bottom, we can take lists of chemicals that have been designated by different public health agencies as being important to reduce 
in combustible cigarette smoke because they're thought to be related to smoking-related diseases. So one example is the FDA published a priority list of 18 different chemicals. And we can measure the levels in our laboratory of those different chemicals that are produced either by a cigarette or um, from the tobacco heating system. On a very regular basis in our laboratories, we're actually me measuring a total of 58 different chemicals that we believe are important in smoking-related diseases and are important um, for our product. Um, and that's the, the graph you see in the middle. Of those 58 chemicals, 15 of them are carcinogenic, so cancer-causing chemicals. If we measure the levels that you see in conventional cigarette smoke, and we use a reference cigarette called the 3R4F, if we measure the levels of each and every one of those lists of chemicals and represent the level that we see in cigarette smoke as 100%, so that's the red bar that you see at the top, do exactly the same laboratory experiments on the tobacco heating system, you get the, the, the bar that you see in yellow at the bottom. So the production of those harmful or potentially harmful chemicals is on average more than 90% reduced compared to the levels that we see in a combustible cigarette. And interestingly for the carcinogens, they're more than 95% reduced compared to, to cigarette smoke. So here's, that's really a, a big magnitude of difference and that's exactly the position we wanted to be in. We wanted to see very substantial reductions in the levels of those chemicals. So that's the first step. So the next step, this is laboratory uh, machine smoking. We need to understand what's the impact on adult smokers. So this is one study we've done, um, essentially four reduced exposure studies um, in Japan, in the US, in Europe, uh, here in Poland um, as, as well. So what we did is we brought a group of adult smokers into the clinic in this study, and we took measurements of the levels of markers that indicated whether they were exposed to harmful chemicals or not. I'm showing four here. We actually have 15 on a poster outside. The ones in red are the ones who continued smoking for the duration of the study. The ones in green are the ones who quit during the study. And the ones in blue are the ones who switch to the tobacco heating system. Now you can see all the green and the blue lines are almost indistinguishable in some cases. So that shows you that smokers achieved levels of exposure <coughs> reduction that come close to the levels seen in smoking abstinence. We also have our mechanism, disease mechanism studies done in laboratories, and you can see the impact on the disease mechan mechanisms for the reference cigarette smoke on the left-hand <laughs> side. And that pizza plot, if you like, just shows you there is a big impact of cigarette smoke on disease mechanisms. When we do the same analysis with the tobacco heating system on the right-hand side, you see a very substantial reduction in the biological impact compared to cigarette smoke. The laboratory models of disease, so animal models that can look at disease endpoints related to cardiovascular disease, so this is atherosclerotic plaque formation in a mouse model. You can see that mice that were exposed to cigarette smoke develop a lot of that atherosclerotic plaque. Mice that were exposed to cigarette smoke for two months and then went into cessation mode, so then were exposed to fresh air, so the green bar, you see they have a reduction in the formation of um, atherosclerotic plaque. The switching one, so the yellow one, is ones, uh, mice that were exposed to cigarette smoke for two months and then were switched to the tobacco heating system for the remaining six months of the study. And you can see they achieve levels of reduction in atherosclerotic plaque um, production compared to cigarette smoke that are very, very similar to the levels seen in uh, the cessation model. We also have some early results from clinical studies in humans, in adult smokers, that show that some of the um, clinical risk indicators for cardiovascular disease, and we see five of them here, they all move in the same direction as the, one, uh, as the um, smokers who stop smoking for the duration of the study. So they move in the same direction as smoking cessation with many of the effects of smoking cessation being preserved in the group who switched to the tobacco heating system. 
Then acceptability. We're very aware that acceptability of the product is really, really crucial because it's important that smokers switch to this product and don't go back to combustible cigarettes and don't dual use to any high amount um, with the combustible cigarettes. And here you can see data over three months from Japan and the US where we used a validated um, modified cigarette equivalence questionnaire to check product sat satisfaction over the three months of the study. And you can see it particularly striking in Japan, after a one week uh, period of adjustment, the smokers who switched actually found the product just as satisfying as their normal brand of conventional cigarette. And this we've also seen replicated in the commercialization setting, particularly in Japan, where we see more than 100,000 smokers have been able to switch fully to this product since we started the national expansion um, back in 2015. So almost finally, just a summary. So you've seen a snapshot of the evidence we have. We've shown this product does not combust tobacco. That results in more than 90% on average reduction in the formation of harmful chemicals. We see a reduction in exposure to those chemicals in smokers who switch to the product that comes close to the reduction that's seen in smoking cessation. We also see uh, favorable changes in disease mechanisms and disease risk endpoints that indicate um, that this product has real potential. So with that, we are going to submit to the US FDA through their MRTP process later on this year, but we're also cognizant that this is data that's coming from a tobacco company, and we understand that people will be skeptical about that. So I just wanted to let you know that we have a large multi-year program that's ongoing that seeks to get independent verification of our results. So we have our SPV Improver Program, which is a crowdsourced peer review program, looking at our disease mechanisms and our toxicological assessment results. We have expert reviews that have been commissioned by a number of scientists across the world. But then more recently, we've established an investigator-initiated studies program where our aim is to facilitate independent investigators to do research on our marketed products that fall into our portfolio of potentially reduced risk products. If anyone would like to conduct a study, we'd be really happy to discuss with you and explain how the process um, works. So thank you very much, and I'm just going to acknowledge you.